Hello. Hello. How are you? I don't. All right. I guess I'm okay. I don't know what's going on with this technology. <laughs> I got to check this out, figure out what's going on. Okay. I was trying to open it up as the host and it wouldn't take my information. We'll work through it. All right. Hello, everybody. Good evening. How are you doing, Dr. Howard? Everybody else? Doing okay. Thanks to Ms. Ratliff. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hello. 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 Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Hello. Pastor, Hello. I hope you're well. Hello. Hello. Anderson, good to see all of you in the background. Yeah. 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 Good to see all of you. Good to be seen. Pastor, am I late or early? What am I? Okay. You're on time. I have it just turned 630. Just as you were asking the question, it turned six. Oh, really? <laughs> oh my goodness, it's gonna snow. <laughs> Please don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> uh, we just fight. <laughs> How's everybody doing? All right. Yeah, How are you caught? I'm doing well. Thank you. Good, good. How's everybody? Hello. All right. Lane. How are you? Lane. All right. Doing all right. Yeah. I see a few people still checking in. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. That is wonderful. Oh. Hope everybody had a very good day. I did. Yes. Hope yes, you did. Sir. Good. Busy, but good. Good, 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 good. good. Yeah. All right. Where are we tonight? Oh. Reverend Taylor? Yes, Pastor. I'm like our Lord. I see 12 disciples. So it might be <laughs> Hey, that's enough if they're faithful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to see everybody. And I know you're really excited about our. Uh, coming lesson in a few minutes. Uh, Reverend Paler is with us. Our students are here. We may have somebody to join us in a few minutes. I'm going to ask if uh, whoever feels led to pray, if you would lead us in an opening prayer tonight. Whosoever will, let him pray. Let us pray. Right. Heavenly Father, Eternal God, as we meet this evening, yes, yes we ask yes. that you would provide us wisdom, yes. guidance, and direction. You are our tower of strength, and you are our rescue. Everything we need is found in you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet again to study the scripture. Bless our teacher, and bless us also so that we may strengthen our knowledge and messaging as we gather today around your name. We pray that you will fill our hearts, our minds, and our souls so that we will live our lives to do your will. Yes, yes. Bless our families and protect us from evil. For you are the kingdom, we have all the power and the glory. We cannot thank you enough for everything you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Anderson. You're welcome. Uh, Reverend Paler, uh, let us know when you want us to mute. I hear a little noise in the background, but uh, I'm turning it over um, to you. Now. Okay. Um, 
Okay, Pastor. We have um, we have at least 12 on the call tonight. So some of you that are on the call that haven't responded in the past, maybe you may want to respond tonight. We have quite a few questions tonight. That's one of the things I promised last week that we would have a little surplus of questions tonight because we will wrap up the book of Jude. And so if you have not been fortunate enough to respond to a question, hopefully you will respond tonight. Certainly want to hear from you if at all possible. And class, if you will, if you'll go ahead and mute now, we'll get ready to get into this last lesson in the book of Jude. We'll wrap that up tonight. I do not know um, if I have my screen set correctly. I could be way up here, way down here. I don't know. But if I'm not, uh, if my screen is not set correctly, someone please let me know. Yes, On last week, uh, we did our best to share with you some, some examples, 21st century examples of apostate. We mentioned several um, contemporary things that are apostate. Uh, not as a warning, but just so that you would be aware or it will be a greater awareness for you that it does exist and it is in our midst today. Um, and so last week we did that. We also, um, we also mentioned some, some religions um, that are par state. Um, and we stopped, we said the verdict is out on the Catholic church. I, I just threw that out that the verdict is out on the Catholic church, but I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I, I wonder about the Catholic church. Now I have a lot of friends that are Catholics too. Amen, love everybody. I have friends that are Catholics and they're good people. Don't misunderstand me, they're good people. The, the concerns that I have may be similar to the concerns that you have about the type of Bible they carry and about some of their practices. That's where I am with the Catholic Church and maybe you're there too, I don't know. Now, something you may have noticed uh, about the book of Jude, if I hope you have. Yes, it's a short book class, a very short book. And he ends this book with a benediction, uh, a closing prayer. Not every writer in the New Testament closes out with a benediction like this. When you look at those last four verses in the book of Jude, it may give you a sense or a feeling that the book of Jude is somewhat incomplete in the sense that it seems as if it just drops off the page. It drops off the stage, very similar to the book of Acts. When we were dealing with the book of Acts, we all reached a consensus that the book of Acts really didn't end. It's, it's us, it continues, it's us, it's us right now. The warning that Jude gives in his little book, I, I have a sense of believing Jude didn't say everything he wanted to say, but he got to the point where the Holy Spirit wanted him to cut it off and to keep from ending it so abruptly, he gives a benediction. And we'll talk a little bit about that benediction um, in a few minutes. But now I'm gonna say something about it now because we're gonna get there in a few minutes. One way, and I, I don't see it being used much today, but it is appropriate. One way to say goodbye to a group of people that you love is to close out with a benediction. Uh, my children, and they're grown, when we talk on the phone sometimes, they don't wanna say goodbye. They may say, see you later, or I'll talk to you later. Saying goodbye for some people, it gives them the impression that they may not see you again or um, whatever. So they prefer to end a conversation saying, see you later, talk with you later. That's okay with me. But if there's a group that you're close to 
and they're close to you, you don't always have to say goodbye. You can close with a benediction. And by doing so, you're hoping and praying for the best to happen to that group that you're departing from. Are you with me? Okay, so a benediction, benediction can be used as a way of expressing your feeling and hoping the best of the group that you're getting ready to leave. A lot of people think that the benediction, for the most part, is just what we have at the end of a regular church service. Not so, not so, not so. At a family reunion, when, when your folk get ready to leave, you don't have to say goodbye. Close out with a benediction. And they'll know, they'll know where they are in your heart, that you love them and you hope the best for them. Now, on last week, we, uh, we got down to a verse um, in which Jude pulled from the book of Enoch. And it talked about um, the Lord Jesus coming with 10,000 of his saints. Now, tonight, we're going to look at a verse um, that's very similar to that. And that's where we'll pick up at. And we'll move on from there. <clears throat> verse 15. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches with which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Jude is simply saying here that Jesus has an appointed time to deal with those apostate people as well as, as, well as others who hate him. Now, one characteristic of an apostate person is that they are anti-Christ. Last week, we um, Jude did a very good job of giving us some descriptions and that kind of thing about those folk. But here's one, that, a simple one you can keep in mind. They are anti-Christ. And verse 15 lets us know the Lord is going to execute judgment on that group. And you may say, preacher, when will that take place? That takes place at the millennium. Uh, at the beginning of that 1,000 year reign. I think we mentioned last week, I hope we did something about at that time, Jesus comes back to the earth. He comes and it's called the day of the Lord because when he comes, it will be night. But you have to keep in mind uh, in that part of the world, in Israel, in their faith, in their tradition, the day begins at night. So their day begins at night. So the day of the Lord will begin at night. And uh, you can read more about it in Amos and Joel and some of the other books. But it's during that time he's going to deal with that. That's when he's also going to deal with uh, those fallen angels, those that are in captivity and those that are not in captivity that we call demons. He's going to deal with them at that time. Also at that time, during the... 1,000 year reign, he's going to take Satan himself, and Satan is going to be bound for those 1,000 years. Later on, he'll be loose for a short period of time, short period of time, but he will be bound during those 1,000 years in which Christ will reign on the earth. And um, this verse also reminds us of the fact he sees all we do. He hears all we say. You may have heard that saying coming up as a little child. God is watching. He sees all you do, and he hears all you say. Let's see if, that's, if this verse speaks to that. And of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Uh-huh. So he does hear all you say. Okay, moving down to verse 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speak of great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. The key word in that verse is advantage. Um, when you have an advantage over someone, 
don't take that advantage. Just because you have that advantage, you shouldn't do it. Just because you have that advantage. There, there have been some situations. Um, I've come in a church and, and the usher um, said, don't you want to come on down to the front? And I would say, no, ma'am, I'll just sit right here until the pastor comes out. And then the pastor can invite me down to the front. Even though the usher was already ready to walk me down to the podium. Uh-uh. To do that would mean I'm taking an advantage. Are, are you with me? Because you have the right to be first or priority over someone else, don't go there. Be humble. Don't use your advantage over someone else. Are you with me? Now, in this particular verse, it, it speaks about some more characteristics of those folk. Their mouths speak of great swelling words. Oh, they probably have a big wide vocabulary. But remember from last week's lesson, Jude said they are clouds that carry no rain. <clears throat> They're just puffed up clouds. They carry no rain. They carry no word. They have nothing to deliver to you. Okay. Um, and they're in your presence only because they want to fulfill their own lust. That's why they're there, to fulfill their own lust. We talked about last week a little bit about the love feast that Paul um, had been a part of some in the New Testament and how Paul had told the people to eat before the Lord's Supper is administered. Well, these apostates would come, wouldn't bring any food and eat more than anybody else. And they weren't shame of their behavior. Not only do they speak swelling words and they murmur against the truth and they complain against the truth, they're just, they're just full of pride. And you know what God says about pride. Pride leads to what? Destruction, destruction every time. Look down at verse 17. But beloved, Remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you may say, what words, are, what words here is Jude talking about? Jude is talking about any and all words spoken by the apostles, because any and all words spoken by the apostles are the same as if they were spoken by Jesus himself. So any of those words that were spoken by the apostles, you need to bring to your memory or you need to recall those words because those words are good for your growth and edification. That's what Jude is saying. Don't forget what the apostles have taught you. Verse 18, how that they told you there, there should be markers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. That is so true. Let me toss this out here, class, to you tonight. I started off by saying it appeared as if Jude had more that he wanted to say. But perhaps the Holy Spirit just told him to cut it off right there. Perhaps that's what it was. But I want to toss this out there to you. And in your observation, look and see if you see this starting to take shape. There appears to be a time coming when the book that's going to be considered the apostate book is going to be the Bible. What I'm trying to say, there appears to be coming a time in which people are going to rally against the word of God. That's, that's the way things are going. You may say, well, preacher, can you give some examples of that? Sure I can. Oprah Winfrey, uh, some call her the big O. If you ever follow her talk about faith, you would know she's very critical of the word of God very, very critical of the word of God. 
And most of the time, she will tell her audience that she doesn't believe the Bible. Oprah will go as far as to say, you have to be your own God. You have to make your own self happy. There are some groups in the country right now that are already organizing, waiting for the right time to come before the Supreme Court to ask the Supreme Court to declare the Bible as an illegal book. Now you may find that hard to believe, but I'm gonna to toss it out here to you tonight. Some things are being withheld now because of the power of the word of God. You think about these organizations that are promoting transgender and, and some of this other stuff. The reason they haven't made more progress than they've made is because the Bible blocks them. I wish I had a witness tonight, but that's okay. Wish I had a witness. That's okay, but I'm in the book of Jude and he said stand, so that's what I'm going to do. The reason some of those groups haven't made more progress than what they've made is because of the Bible. The reason it took all these years for the city council in Raleigh to finally authorize liquor to drink on Sunday morning, the reason why it took them so long was because they were afraid to come against the Bible. I wish I had a witness, but that's all right. They were afraid to come against the Bible. And it was just last year when they approved that you could eat breakfast in the morning and, and have alcohol to drink and they will serve you alcohol. They had been afraid because of the Bible. There are some people who have joined some civic groups in this country and I'm, I'm gonna tell it like it is. They are giving false pretense. There are some who say that they are for Black Lives Matter. They say that, and they're quick to say that. But when you mention some other things, I'm gonna mention some in a minute. When you mention some other things, you watch how quickly they back up. You go into a crowd that says they support Black Lives Matter, and you say to them, well, Black Lives Matter all lives matter. And if black lives matter, why aren't you out there protesting in front of the abortion clinics? Because 85% of the children that are aborted in this country are black. Now, do all black lives matter? I wish I had a witness tonight. I told you I was gonna drop some bombs. I'm dropping some tonight. 85% of the babies aborted in this country are black. But you got some folk that are willing to band together and say black lives matter, but they won't touch that. Why won't they touch it? They won't touch it because some in that group don't believe this book. Let's move on. <clears throat> Verse 19, let's go back to, yeah, let's start at 19. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Now, we ran across this word sensual two times before in the past, and we gave uh, a definition both times we ran, we ran across that word. One definition of it, again, is natural, to be in the flesh to respond to things in life by impulses of the flesh. Sensual, if it feels good, do it. That's really what that word is saying. If it feels good, do it. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tells us, tells us if you love me, 
you'll keep my commandments. Oh, I wish I had a witness tonight, but that's all right. But that word sensual here is meaning if it feels good to you, you do it. Yes, ma'am. And, and, and Jude goes as far as to say, oh, and it is true, you. they do not have the spirit with them. Oh, they are acting you. off of impulse. Anybody want to respond to that? Anybody want to unmute and respond to that? Anyone? Okay, let's go on down to verse 20. Last week, that was our breakout verse. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. One thing that will help me and help you build ourselves up is the study of the word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of what? The word of truth. One way to build yourself up is to study the word of God. Now, since I said that, let me give you an example because I don't want, I don't want the class to go out and not have an example that they can chew on. Jesus was confronted by Satan. And it seemed like Satan had caught our Lord off guard because he had just come out of a 40 day fast. And Satan seems to almost throw a curve at him. Jesus simply responded by quoting a verse of scripture. Ah, he quoted a verse of scripture. How did he know to do that? Because he had built himself up with the word of God. On one occasion, he told him, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. But there were other occasions in which he dealt with Satan simply by quoting a verse of scripture. So another way to build yourself up is to study the word of God. Now let's dwell on this verse a little bit more. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh boy. I want you to take a few notes on this part. Sometimes when you want to pray, I'm not going to say don't pray. But I am going to say sometimes when you want to pray, close your eyes, kneel your head, and say nothing. And let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit do the praying. Now, let me see if I can make that a little clearer. Sometimes we want to talk to God. We've been through a lot. And sometimes... We're not in the best state of mind to have a conversation with our father. Our emotions get in it. Other things get in it. But we do know that we need to take it to God. We need to take that burden to the Lord. But we got so much going on at that moment. Something may have hurt us so bad we can hardly hold our head up. Or whatever it might be. Yeah. You can still pray by not saying a word, closing your eyes, kneeling your head, and letting the Holy Spirit come up through you. The Holy Spirit, which is in you, will do the praying, and that prayer will go up through the Son to the Father. Remember, Jesus said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. So your prayer will be taken up by the Holy Spirit to Jesus Christ. And from Jesus, it goes to the Father. So there should be times when I pray and you pray, we don't say nothing. We just kneel our head and close our eyes. The most we can say is, Lord, you know. After you say that, let the Holy Spirit take it from there. Because you said, Lord, you know. 
let the Holy Spirit tell them. Because sometimes we can be in such a emotional distress. We, we might leave something out or we may include something that doesn't need to be included. Let's, let's stay here for another minute. A lot of Christians, and I've been guilty of it too, sometimes we approach prayer, not intentionally, but we approach prayer with a grocery list. A grocery list of things we need or things we desire. And I'm not going to say it doesn't have its place. But what I am going to say, it should never be first. No matter what those needs are, the first thing should be to send up admiration and praise to God. That should be first. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to keep it real tonight. You may have some serious needs, but the first thing you do is bless the Lord. Send praises up to God. Thank him that things are as well as they are. Yeah, you got some things to, to share, but you want to praise him for what he's done. Because no matter what you got to share, it could always be worse. So you start off with admiration to the Father. Oh, Lord, bless your holy name. You praise him just as David would do in Psalms. Then you approach him with your needs. Now, let me say this. Some of the things on our grocery list that we feel we need, we don't need. We need it because of the way we see it. As a human being, I'm going to include myself. We never see things the way they really are. Every human being on the earth can see things the way they see it. But we never see things truly the way they are. But God does. That's why I said sometimes we can have some things on that list that we think we need or we think are crucial. But in God's eyes, they may not be. And God may see it from a different angle, knowing that if he grants you this or that, it may create a problem for you down the road. Are you with me so far? Okay. Lastly, before we move off of that verse, and I mentioned this several months ago, but it, I think it bears repeating. You can be in a situation, distraught, and you start praying. And it has torn you up so bad, you can't finish the prayer. Don't worry about it. Let me say it again. You can be in a situation and be so distraught that you can't finish the prayer. Don't worry about it. You could be praying and you fall asleep before you finish that prayer. Don't worry about it. Because the scriptures teach us that the Holy Spirit will take those utterances and groans that you try to complete and he will complete that prayer. Remember, the Holy Spirit lives in you. So if you don't get a chance to complete that prayer, he, he will complete that prayer. And the Holy Spirit will always, always approach our Heavenly Father with the best interest of you in mind. You can, even though you weren't able to finish that prayer. Verse 21, keep yourselves in the love. Let me flip my page here. 
keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. I think the best way to keep yourself in the love of God is to do the things God would have you to do. Going back to the verse that I mentioned earlier, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You want to keep yourself in the love of God. Well, I think maybe Jude may would extend this to say class, keep yourself in the grace and mercy of God because you are already his beloved. Do you follow me? You're already his beloved. So he loves you. But in terms of favor, in terms of blessings, in terms of mercy, you want to be in a situation where those things can truly be yours, where you can lay claim to those things. And he's always a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But you, you need to be obedient to the commandments of Christ for that type of situation. How can it happen? Walk in the word. Walk in the word. Keep yourselves in the love of God. You don't want to be doing anything, anything that may cause the Father to have to chastise you. We're going to get chastised for some things, but we don't want to do anything intentionally where he has to chastise us that we knew better. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Amen. It's a wonderful thing to be able to sense for yourself the love of God. Sometimes we can sense his love. We can sense his presence. That's a wonderful feeling. It's a miserable feeling when you can't sense his presence and you can't sense his love. And for some folk, it's that way because of how they're living or because of some things they've done. If anyone wants to unmute and, and talk to me about this verse, go right ahead before we go to the next verse. Anyone? Pastor, would you like to comment on that verse? I would say it, it may be that the natural inclination is hoping that God continues to love us, but here we're told to stay in his love. Mm -hmm. So it's not just our receiving, our accepting, yeah. but our putting forth the effort to remain in that um, yeah. fellowship that the Lord has given us. I agree. A absolutely, Pastor, I agree. It reminds me of being a small child. I wanted to stay in the love of my father. Uh, because he knew what to do with a dogwood switch. I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay in the love of my, my father and my mother because she knew what to do with a dogwood switch too. Amen. Anyone else want to comment on that verse before we move on? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Another thing that goes along with that verse. Uh, that I want to mention, class, walk in the sunshine. You want to keep yourself in the love of God, walk in the sunshine, okay? Walk in the sunshine. Be children of the day, not of the night. I hope that helps you. I hope, I hope it helps you because that's, I just want to toss out some things that will help you. Okay, let me pick up my Bible and see where we are at. <clears throat> Verse 22, and of some have compassion, making a difference. Um, um, that particular verse, that, that end, give you another way to look at that end part of the verse. Um, but let me talk a little bit about the first part of it first. Some have compassion. 
as missionaries, that's what we do. That's what we do. We have compassion. We have compassion for one another. We have compassion for the stranger. We have compassion for the sinner that we may encounter. I hope we do. Now, this verse, the tail end of this verse, making a difference. Let me give you two, two interpretations of that, of that verse. Let me see if I can put my put my uh, my hand on it. Um, that's the last part of that verse can also mean helping those who honestly doubt, helping those who honestly doubt, helping those who honestly doubt. Making a difference here could mean helping those who honestly doubt. Here's, here, here's the deal. This is what Jude is getting at. There are some people, and it was true in his day, who have been tossed to and fro from different religions. They, they're, they're seeking something, and they've been tossed to and fro. The Holy Spirit has allowed you to cross paths or paths with some individuals who are seeking and they are honest doubters. They know a little bit about the word of God and what little bit they know, it may interest them, but they have some doubts. The Holy Spirit allows you showing compassion to speak to some of their doubts. They may come to you back and forth over a period of time with questions about the word of God, questions about how they can better understand the word of God or how they can better get to know the God that you serve. Your approach to them should always be with compassion. In fact, to be perfectly honest with you, sometimes you may feel like giving up on them. You may say, they're never going to get the message, but you don't. You always show compassion and you leave it there. And if you watch it over a period of time, they're going to keep coming back. And then eventually many of them are going to say, I'm ready to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. I know now what you spoke of. I better understand the book that I have, but it only happens when you're willing to show compassion. A lot of people who are confused become more confused when we turn them off. When we say things like, I don't have time for this, or I don't have time for you. When you do that class, one of the things they're gonna do, they're gonna wanna judge you. Well, what type of, what, what is it that you believe? So you always want to have compassion. Everybody's not always wrong and everybody's not always right, but everybody has feelings and everybody is important. Do you see what, what Jude is getting at here? Showing compassion. Um, some people will come to you simply because you did show compassion. Some will be drawn to you by your lifestyle. Are you aware, class, that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you have a glow upon you? I wish I had a witness tonight. Everyone who trusts in Jesus Christ, you have a glow about you. Uh, you may say, preacher, can you, can you prove that? Sometimes I can. Have you ever had someone to approach you and ask you if you were a Christian? Have you ever? Or have you ever had someone to come up to you and approach you and say, are you a preacher? Or have you ever had someone to come up to you and say, what church do you belong? You know why they did that? It's because you have a glow about you. Maybe no other person has ever told you that. 
but I'm going to hit you with it tonight. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you have a glow about you. And that glow is there so that you can be a witness for the Lord. Some people are going to be drawn to you by that glow. You may have never said a word. You can say, oh, I never told that person that I go to church. I never, I never told that person that I was an usher. I never told that person I was a missionary. How did they pick it up? It was that glow that they saw on you. I never told that person I was a preacher. Where did they get that from? It was the glow. It was the glow. And I want you to always remember that. If you're born again, you have a glow about you. You may never see it, but other people who see you will pick up on it. Amen. Okay. All right. All right. Moving on. Okay. So that verse can read, and some have compassion for those who are in doubt. And some have compassion for those who are in doubt. Okay. One thing you can do when you are approached by people who are in doubt, you can share a portion of your pastor's sermon. That's what I do sometimes. If, I, if I'm approached by someone who's in doubt, I'll share just a little bit of my pastor's sermon that I heard on Sunday. I'll just drop it, drop a little bit of that sermon and keep it moving. And you know what? When that person sees me again, they're going to want to know a little bit more about the Lord. So sometimes we can share a Bible verse. Sometimes we can drop a little bit of the sermon that we heard on Sunday. But we always do it with compassion. Now, look at Jude 23. That is a perplexing type of verse, isn't it? Well, it might be. Let's see if we can make a little sense of it as we get ready to close out. Let me turn to it. And others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Okay. I apologize that I didn't jot this down, but Jude is pulling part of that verse from the Old Testament. Um, there was an occasion when when God was talking with Satan and in the conversation, God tells Satan, I'm going to pull this brand out of the fire. And the brand that he pulled out of the fire was Israel. When we think of the term brand, um, well, none of us are cowboys and none of us live on a farm. But there was a day, our pastor's grinning, there was a day when um, beef farmers would take that hot poke iron and it would have some initials or something on it and put it in the fire and put a brand on their cattle. Some of you know what I'm talking about. So if the cattle is lost or if the cattle is stolen, they can look at the side of that beef cattle and see that brand and know which farm it belongs on. Well, <clears throat> in the Old Testament, I can't recall the whole conversation right now, but our Lord was talking with Satan. And you know, Satan is always trying to get an advantage. And so God just comes out and he tells Satan, I'm going to pull this brand out of the fire. And that brand was Israel. Now, in this particular verse, when we look at it, we, we sort of wonder, well, what in the world is, is, is Jude talking about um, pulling them out of the fire and others saved with, with fear? Well, as a Christian, it's risky business. It really is. It's risky business because we know there's an enemy out there. And 
we have to stay prayed up and we have to keep the armor on because we know there's an enemy out there. But we know it's also our obligation to witness and to speak on behalf of the master. Sometimes in some situations, when you have the urge to speak, you sort of wonder, well, ah, uh, should I say something now? Should I wait? You, you, you want to and you don't. You want to and you don't. Sometimes that don't part is fear, but perfect love casts out all fear. Who brings the fear about? Satan. So, and others save with fear. Some folk are going to be saved because you're not going to give in to that fear. The fear is going to always be there, but you're not going to give in to that fear. You're going to go ahead and share something about the word of God to them. And who knows, that little bit that you say or share with them might be all they need to hear. A lot of people who are successful in life will tell you they never really got rid of the fear. They just ignored the fear and went on and did what they have to do. I wish I had a witness tonight. That's good advice for, for me and for you. We just ignore the fear and we do what we have to do for the Lord. I don't know anything better to tell you because in these last days, hey, it's coming from every direction. We just ignore the fear and we go ahead. Then this part here, pulling them out of the fire. Before I was saved, I was born dead. This is what Paul says over in Ephesians. I was born dead to sin and trespasses. Somewhere in chapter two, he talks about that. But not only was I born dead to sin and trespasses, when I became old enough and had reached the age of accountability and had not surrendered my life to Jesus Christ, I want you to get this class, and I had not surrendered my life to Jesus Christ, I was close to hell. I don't know about you. I was close to hell. Think about it. This verse says, pulling them out of the fire. I was at the gate. And you may have been at the gate too, but somebody pulled us, somebody pulled us out of the fire before we got in the pot. Somebody reached us at the last minute. There have been times in my youth, I can almost feel the flames at my neck. I knew I was close. And somebody spoke a word. And before I knew it, I had made a turn. I've heard other people say they could feel the heat on their neck. They knew they were close to the gate. But something happened at the last minute, and they came on in to Jesus Christ. This is what Jude is saying, pulling them out of the fire. Oh, my Lord. They're already feeling the flames. But wait a minute, you say something to them like, God loves you. Jesus is waiting for you. And they make that turn, pulling them out of the fire. Who do you know right now in your family or in your neighborhood who's right there at the fire? And I'll be honest with you, anyone who is not saved is at the fire. They're at the fire. And they don't get away from the fire until they make that turn and confess Jesus Christ. Moving on. He says, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. There's an old saying, and I don't know how true it is. Pastor may know. I do know that for the saints, we already have our position in heaven. So we're citizens of two two spears, and we already have our position in heaven. Um, our seat is there. Our mansion is there. And so we can believe to a certain extent, and it is true, that we already have eternal life. 
We already have it. Yeah, we got eternal life. And I've heard people say this, and you may have said it, I don't know. I've heard people say they already have their white robes. I've heard people say that. The moment they were saved and made their turn, that turn to Jesus Christ, they got their white robes. Well, that could be true. But because we live in a fallen world, and because that sin nature has to be crucified every day, that white robe can be spotted. Amen? That white robe can be spotted. I'm <laughs> Listen, when I eat spaghetti, I never wear a white shirt. I don't know about you. I don't put on a white shirt if I'm going to have spaghetti for something. I don't even, I don't dare do it. So if you already have on your white robe, little things, yeah. little things yeah. that you know better or little things that caught you off guard, little sins, any sin will spot your robe and you hate it. What is it that's spotting the rope? It's the flesh. It's the flesh that's spotting the rope. And we know God hates the flesh. God can't use anything that's done in the flesh. So when we do something for God, we have to do it in what class? We have to do it in what? We do it in the spirit. When we do something for God, we have to do it in the spirit. Can't, can't do something for God in the flesh. All right, let's look at this, this, this verse here. We're almost, almost through. Okay, verse 24 and 25. We started this lesson off by saying Jude seemingly ends this book um, in an abrupt way. Yeah, in an abrupt way. He, he, he tells us to, hey, reach out and save those that's closest to hell. And then he gives us a benediction. That's okay. I can't help but wonder if the other part of Jude's book, if there is to be another part, is to be carried out and lived out in the lives of the saints. We are to live out the other part of Jude's book. The Holy Spirit had him cut it off right there. He closes with this benediction. I've used this benediction before. The pastor has used this benediction before. And I'm saying to you as students in this Bible class that you can use this benediction too. Usher board meeting, missionary meeting, pastors, pastor's aid meeting, digging board meeting. You can use this benediction. This benediction is universal and it covers it all. It also says to you and me, just how much Jew loves the Lord Jesus Christ. When you read it, it is so beautiful and so complete and so comprehensive and so intense. It lets you know just how much he admires the Lord Jesus Christ, and we should too. Now, there's nothing he left out there. When I looked at this a few days ago and I read it, it made me proud. Even if I stumble, he's got it. He's all wise and he's my savior. And I'll tell you something I'm going to do. I'm going to start using this benediction more myself. I, most of you know I use another one. But I'm going to start using this one more myself. Because it is so complete. Yes, it's a prayer. But who doesn't need prayer? And I'm, I'm guilty of this. I've done this before. When my children would needed to hit the road to go back home. I've used the benediction. I didn't say, goodbye, Renita. Goodbye, Rolanda. I said, girls, come here. And I gave a benediction. And I pulled pieces from the one that Jude has right here, because that said it all. Amen. It, I put them in God's care. I let them know I love them. 
I let them know I want them to be safe. I let them know that they can trust in him to get to where they're going. And, I, and it also tells them he will meet their every need. Amen. Okay, let's unmute. Okay, we are um, through with the book of Jude. We have some questions tonight. We also hope to get some responses from some that have joined us that we normally don't hear from tonight. Someone, someone may want to know um, if we have a question tonight with Sally. I think Sally has at least one situation tonight. Maybe two, but she has at least one. Okay. Let's see where we want to start. Okay. This one is true, true or false. Is it better not to be a member of a church than to claim ownership or membership in an apostate church? True or false? Is it better not to be a member of a church? True. 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 Very true. good. It's true. It's true. Number two, Jude, a brother of Jesus and a brother of James, writes or emphasizes standing for the faith. True or false? True. 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 It's true. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's true. Okay. True or false? Continue. The children of Israel, the fallen angels, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah are examples of apostate groups according to Jude. True or false? Mm -hmm. True. 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 Yes, it's true. It's true. Moving on. Abel brought a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. True or false? True. 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 Okay. It's true. A liberal church will change the wedding vows. True or false? True. 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 A liberal church keeps step with the world. True or false? True. 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 That's true. All right. Okay. More questions. Here we go. What is a love feast? What is a love feast? That's a little bit from last week. What is a love feast? We said Paul even participated in some. What is a love feast? Anyone? Okay. Here's the second part of the question. It may, it may help you a little bit. When did they normally have them? When did they normally have them? What is a love feast? When did they normally have them? Their love feast coincided with communion. But it was, okay. But it was a regular meal, and the purpose of it was promoting fellowship, and everybody was to eat. Everybody and was to eat. Whether they brought food or not. Right. And afterwards, they had the what? The communion. 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 Very good. When did they normally have them? They had them in sync with the communion. Oh, you're doing good so far. Are we ready? Okay. Who knows why Sally invited them into her house? The two ladies came inside of the door with pamphlets and gave two to Sally. Sally looked at the cover of the pamphlets and said, oh yes, I will read them. This, this looks interesting. Please come back next week and let's talk about this some more. And the two ladies left. Now, the two ladies were Jehovah Witnesses. Here's the question. Did Sally do the right thing?
Did yeah. Sally do? Probably. probably. Um, Say it again, Sister Adams. Oh, no. <laughs> she probably, I, I didn't think you heard that. She probably did. I mean, she didn't go along with what they had to say. Reverend, do you mind reading it again? <laughs> sure, let me. <laughs> oh, no. No one knows why she did it. Sally invited two, two ladies to step inside the door and they gave her two booklets. Sally replied, yes, yes, I will look at them. I will read them. Can you two come back this weekend, this Saturday? And they left. They were Jehovah Witnesses. Did Sally do the right thing? No, she did not. Okay, Sister Adam says no. Anyone else saying no? No, no. Yeah, I said no as well. No, because she was inviting them back again. Anyone else? She was, she was being nice, but she should have explained to them her faith. Okay, okay. Okay, I, 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 okay, all right. So you're saying that she should not have invited them in? No. Okay, no. okay, okay. All right, the correct not, answer, go ahead. Not unless she was going to do as Deacon McCabe said and share her faith with them if she invited them in. Right, right. The right. problem that a lot of people have with Jehovah's Witnesses is Christians are not knowledgeable enough about our own faith to share that with Jehovah's Witnesses or to defend Christianity against what they're teaching. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll agree. And, um, and so if when you say, no, she didn't do the right thing, I'll agree. And I'll agree with you, Pastor, because what can happen, they're trained well, they may persuade her over to their camp. That's right. Now, so, right. So now, it depends on your readiness, on right. your preparedness, whether it's good to invite them in or not. If right. you can't defend the faith, leave them outside. Right. Now, here's something Sally could have done. But you had to show you. Left. She could have called her pastor. Are you with me, class? She could have called her pastor and a few of the diggings and invited them to come over on that afternoon. Those two ladies were coming. Mm -hmm. time. And when the two ladies come into the room and introduce themselves, the diggings, the pastor and Sally just sat there to hear what they have to say. And then afterwards, they share the gospel with those two ladies. In other words, Sally could have flipped it. She could have turned it around. I don't think Sally would have. I agree with you. I think Sally would have gotten herself in trouble. Yeah. I agree. Okay. But you had, but you had to show how strong your faith is too. Yeah. Yeah. You're right, Brother Hinton. You're right. You, you, you're absolutely right. Here's... Here's here, next question. Move it on. Reverend. Yes. Just uh, on the end of that, I just recalling Jehovah's Witnesses are taught to strongly promote their faith, but to resist even mm -hmm. being exposed to your faith, even mm -hmm. listening to your teachings. Right, because you're, you're right, Pastor. What would have happened probably in that scenario, they would have turned and walked out. Yeah. Or they would have said something like this. We have overbooked. I'm sorry, we have to go. But you're right. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. But that's a good example. That's a good example of standing for your faith or contending for the faith. Class. I would ask two more questions, but we have gone over, so I'm going to have to stop. 
I have enjoyed you all tonight. You all have been a very good group, and that was a very good book. I'm going to wish you the best. Praise the Lord. And Dr. Howard, we're going to put it in your hands. We went over a little bit. That's that's all right. We went over with uh, quality conversation. Right. Thank you, thank you so much, Reverend Taylor. Uh, it was a short book, but it was a lot of meat on those bones. <laughs> but you said a good grip. And Reverend Paler really dug into those and uh, gave us a lot of the insight into the, into the book of Jude. And basically the book uh, is Jude's warning against false teachers. And if there was ever a time that we need to be aware of false teachings, that time is now. And uh, as we said a few weeks back, the only real way to know what's false is you got to know the real thing. Uh, that's what you have to compare what they're saying to it, which means we got to know the scriptures. We have to study it. We have to be in prayer so that uh, we know the truth. Uh, the truth will set you free and false teachings will put you in trouble. And uh, the trouble is eternal. And, and we certainly don't want anybody <laughs> to, to be in eternal trouble. Uh, <laughs> Reverend Taylor, thank you again for, yes, uh, for, for how you just opened this scripture up to us. Uh, there's yeah. so much in there. Uh, Reverend, do you want to uh, wait until a little later to talk about where we go from here, or you want to talk about it now? <laughs> class you, you you heard the question the question on the floor was where do we go from here uh, pastor what i'd like to do i don't i don't know about the class but what i'd like to do i'd like to um say to the class um let's take a let's take a mini break um uh, if it's all right with the class and after the mini break is over and we'll I'm going to ask the pastor to, to determine over class if it's okay with you we'll go ahead into, into the book of peter you know it's peter one and peter two uh, and that's uh that's the direction we'll be but uh we we want to get a consensus from you guys about taking a short break and then pastor if you'll tell us the length of that short break all right, uh, rather than telling you tonight, I'll get with Reverend Paler and we'll sit down and talk and get back with everybody. We need to give Reverend Paler a little break. He's uh, been very <laughs> diligent. Uh, he, and as I'm listening to him teach, I'm just thinking about the time and, and everything that he had to put in to prepare for the lesson. Uh, it takes a lot longer to prepare the lesson than to teach the lesson. A, a lot of digging, a lot of research that he put in. So we, we're going to give Reverend Palo a break. And uh, I'll put in an email after Reverend Palo and I get together when we're going to start back up, where we're okay. going to start in the scriptures. Does that sound like a good plan? Yes. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. All right, oh, okay. All right Pastor. We're going to let Reverend Taylor catch his breath. <laughs> <laughs> good job. A very good You're job. You're welcome. Outstanding. Outstanding. You're welcome. You're welcome, sir. Anybody else have any comments for the good of the group? Yeah, I have a quick question for Reverend Taylor. All right. Getting back, getting back to the Catholic Church, um, would you, are you saying that um, there are Religion, religion is not religion. Were you saying that? Okay, um, that's a good question, Brother Anderson. Um, what I did do, I think it was last week, and and I, I did it tonight. Uh, I responded by saying the verdict is still out. Okay. The, the verdict is still out on the Catholic Church. Um, but Brother Anderson, I guess the best thing to do with the Catholic Church, in all honesty, is right now is to let each individual 
Bible study student, make that call for yourself. I did. I did. Uh, you right now. You make that call for yourself. I did look up a little information and saw that um, one of the things that the Catholic Church does is uh, I think they use uh, they don't use the they use other symbols uh, than the cross, I believe. Yeah, you're right. And uh, if they if if if, if, if they, they say if you want to pray. You pray it in a church, uh, nowhere other than in the church, something like that. Yep, you're right. So, you're right. Uh, I'm just trying to get up. I'm, I'm going to continue to look into some things. and uh, But um, I'm not Catholic or anything. I'm just right. curious, you know, because <laughs> it was brought up. <laughs> well, and, you... I, and, I, and I brought this picture back there from Michelangelo. Which is yeah. up in the Catholic Cathedral in Rome, right? right. So um, I, I really didn't know a whole lot about it at first, but um, you know, I don't want to um, represent something that's not uh, Baptist or Christian, you know. Right, right, right. When 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 we go into church history, um, when when you study church history, we a lot of good things. <clears throat> a lot of good things came out of Rome and um, uh, the, the Protestant Reformation. We, we just had a lot of good things to come out of Rome. But when we look at when we look at the book that they use to worship from, it's 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 not the 66 books that we know. Now, what I what I tell people is. The verdict is still out, but you 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 make that judgment call um, on your own. Okay, you okay. you pray about it and ask the Lord to reveal and give you some discernment so you can sort of make that call on your own. Um, if if we ever get to the Book of Revelation, um, mm. I'll I'll say a little bit more about the Catholic Church. If we if we ever get to the Book of Revelation. I will tell you some more about the Catholic Church, um, and and some things you might say, "Woo, I didn't know that." But um, but right now, Brother Anderson, that's a good question. I'm just gonna say, keep researching. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Paler. I would add that the cat the Catholic Church and Catholicism. Uh, what I would suggest is that we compare Protestant, uh, the Protestant faith, ours, against Catholicism, and you'll see a lot of differences. Uh, I think Reverend Paler mentioned earlier tonight that people in the Catholic Church pray to Mary, but we don't believe in doing that. And mm -hmm. people in the Catholic Church pray to the priest and the Bible teaches that we are priests. And so mm -hmm. we don't have to pray to, to another person. And there are a lot of differences, even though uh, Catholic is considered Christian and Protestantism is considered Christian. There are, there are quite a few differences. Did you all hear about the situation with the Catholic priest this week that uh, the Roman church has made a statement, a strong statement about it is that uh, I don't remember where he was serving or is serving, but they say this Catholic priest baptized people, thousands of people over decades. And, and forgot to say, yeah. In his baptism ceremony, he said, we baptize you instead of I baptize oh, you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. the I and, heard it. Yeah. and the uh, you know Catholic the uh, Catholic Church is very hierarchy yeah. structured with hierarchy, and the hierarchy has said now all of those people that he baptized need to be baptized again, mm -hmm. and, and some of the, and the marriages as well. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. and so you know the the structure and you know there are a lot of questions that that i would have concerning it um 
the good thing is we know our faith and we know it aligns with scripture. Mm -hmm. and, and when people question what's right, what's wrong, the best place to go is what does the Bible say? And does your denomination align with scripture? Uh, God's word is truth. And that's what we have to stand on. And, and that's what Jude was saying. You know, you get, there are so many different teachings out here and it's easy to get confused. And the best thing to do is to put it up against the word of God. If it aligns with God's word, good. If it doesn't, something's wrong. Hey. That sounds like a good place for us to stop. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. Uh, somebody lead us in prayer, please, and I'll close in prayer for the evening. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank mm -hmm. you, oh God, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for watching over each one of us and bringing us and placing it on our hearts to come together to study your word. Lord, we just pray that you would just uh, live within our hearts and our minds that as we continue to study, that we will just gain new wisdom of the word of God and that we will gain new understanding of your word. Now, Lord, we just thank you for each person um, here today, we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for our instructor. And God, we just pray for all of our church family. We pray, oh God, that you would just touch our hearts and our minds wherever we may be and, and draw us together on one accord. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Before we close tonight, I just want to thank everybody for your birthday wishes and and your calls and, and your text and everything, and certainly for your gifts, most of all for your prayers. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. okay. You still uh, celebrate. You're yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I think I'm going to do Black History Month throughout the rest <laughs> of the month. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. Yes. Pastor, do you feel any older? No. No, sir, not yet. <laughs> Okay. I still got the same pains I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. I'll start missed out on. I'd like to say happy birthday. Thank, you. Oh, thank you so, so uh, much. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, somebody <laughs> asked me today how, how old was I? And I said 46. And I think he believed me for a moment. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. But the truth is, I turned 64. Thank the Lord. Hey. Yeah. Praise right. the Lord. That yeah, is beautiful. Man. Yes, sir. I remember <laughs> when. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm shooting for 100. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Yep. Keep good going. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, good good night. Good night everyone. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah. We see you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> <laughs>